You compose music for licensing by understanding the certain process of arrangement and structure of music for licensing. Now, is there a difference between music as an artist that you produce and music that is going to be aimed for licensing? Like for example, for a YouTube video? And the answer is yes, there is certain things that you need to have in mind in order to compose music for licensing. If you're new to the music licensing industry, and you're coming uh, from a background as an artist, which is most likely the case, uh, because we all come from a, a, an artistic background, right? Like I am a guitarist, so I come from a rock and roll background. I was playing in bands I was, as I was growing up. Um, I studied sound engineering uh, when I in college. And I was always fascinated about music creation, first as a musician and then as a producer, as a sound engineer. But the only reason why I studied sound engineering is because I wanted to, to do it all myself. I wanted to, to really uh, be able to record my own guitar ideas and be able to use samples and whatnot. So it was a fascinating thing for me to learn the aspects of music production. That being said, when I got into music licensing, I didn't know what corporate music was. I didn't know how to make music for licensing. I certainly didn't understand what the structure was for that it was required for a music track for, for music licensing. And there's certain things that you need to take in consideration when it comes down to, to this. And one of the main factors is uh, simplicity. Everything needs to be so simple uh, to the point that it, it, it might sound a little bit too much. <laughs> That sounds a little bit weird, but uh, it's the best way to describe it. Uh, I've been guilty of adding way too many layers to my compositions or to my productions. And by layers, I mean uh, too many melodies, too many things going on in the production. And really, the simplicity is what is key in order to be successful in music licensing. Whether that's going to be music for, for a YouTube video or for a podcast uh, or for a film or for a documentary or for a voiceover, even for a music track, that I will use here on one of my YouTube uh, videos, it has to be very simple. So what does this look like? Well, you cannot have too many things going on in the track because it's gonna interfere with the voice, right? If it's a voiceover or something like that. Uh, but you wanna keep it as simple as possible regardless of the genre. Now, there are some genres, obviously, that it requires a little bit of more uh, busyness, like if it's a jazz track or a trailer track or if it's gonna be something that requires a lot of layers and, and, and a very busyness in, in certain aspects. But for the most part, if you are new to this, or even if you're an experienced one, because there's a lot of experienced composers that struggle with this simplicity, especially if you're an educated musician yourself, you will find it hard to let go of all of the education of music and arrangement and whatnot, and, and try to just bring it down to the, the bare minimum, right? The, the, the very concept of music, which is just, you know, chord progression, rhythm, and, and melody, really. That's it. You don't need, nobody cares how complex the chord progression has been written in what key. It doesn't matter if it's an inversion. It doesn't matter if you have some certain melodies that are not supposed to go together, but they are because you are the creator of it, it has to be something very simple, whatever that means for you. But for me, simplicity means to just using the very basic structure of music and, and really have a chord progression, a melody, and a rhythm. Those are the three core elements of music, especially when it comes down to music licensing. If you can work with those three elements, then it will be much easier for you to understand what you want to compose, especially for music licensing. Another thing to take in consideration when it comes down to arrangement and structure is the timing of the intro, the verse, the chorus, and then the verse. So the arrangement itself needs to be very easy for the listener to go through it and to navigate. So the intros cannot be too long. If the intros are too long, then it's a problem. If the ear candy of your music track happens after a minute and a half, it's not gonna be really helpful. You have to think that people are using these music tracks, like I mentioned, on a YouTube video. So you want the ear candy as quick as possible. You want the intro to be as, as short as possible, whatever that means for you, and whatever that means for your style of music. So thinking in those terms, usually, it's gonna help you be equipped with a better understanding of what music licensing really is and what a music track for music licensing 
it is as well because I did struggle a lot with this. I thought that my tracks needed to be this overcomplicated thing, like a long intro and and, and check out this uh, amazing development until I get to the point. You need to get to the point fast. You need to get to the point as quick as possible. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna take a shortcut, but usually a lot of composers struggle with this part and that's why I emphasize on it. Keep it simple, keep it short, and keep it to the point. Again, think in terms of, of three, chord progression, melody, and rhythm. That's it, those are really basic things that you need to keep in mind. When it comes down to mixing and mastering, your track will mix itself if you have instrumentation and arrangement in place, all right? Meaning that if you have selected the right amount of instruments, whatever that is for you, uh, you need to be able to mix these instruments. The more instruments you have, the harder it's gonna be to mix. So for me, I like to think in terms of a band. I come from a rock and roll background, so I'm used to be thinking in my production as I have a drummer, I have a bass player, I have a guitarist, and I have a keyboard player, right? There's no singer. <laughs> so I have like four people in my band. Right? So I'm thinking in terms of that, I have a drummer, so I don't, I don't need a second drummer. I don't need more than one bass player. And if I'm gonna have a guitarist, which is me, I usually will play two guitars. And, and then there's some keyboards or some, you know, some strings or something, some, you know, but it's usually a keyboard player that I like to think of. So I don't overcomplicate my instrumentation. So you have to think about the instrumentation. Obviously, if you're making cinematic music, then you're playing with a different animal altogether, but then you have to think how many instruments are in this cinematic track. Is it the whole orchestra? Really? Okay, so do you really need the whole orchestra in your track? Well, some, maybe sometimes you do, right? But then you really need to think carefully on how you're gonna compose your track. Do you just gonna be using certain elements of the orchestra? Then you have to think in advance. The same goes with any other genre, whether it's hip hop, whether that's rock, a pop, it doesn't really matter what genre we're talking about or style of music, you really need to start thinking in terms of a minimal kind of philosophy to everything that you bring to the table when it comes to music licensing. As an exercise, it's really good to, to start composing music on a regular basis, ideally every single day. I've been talking a lot about uh, my 30 day stop music licensing challenge. Composing music every single day is a way of building the muscle for writing music for music licensing. So this is something that you can go and embark in your own journey. A lot of people uh, struggle with this idea of composing music every single day. Uh, it's not sustainable, obviously, but at the same time, it's something that you can uh, do for a period of time in order to build the muscle and get fit in music licensing. I hope this video finds you well, my friend. I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you would like to learn about music licensing and how to earn income with your stock music, all the resources and everything, all the links are in the description. I hope to see you soon, my friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, rock and roll, and here's to your success.